All right, let's talk Atlanta Falcons. It's obviously been one heck of an offseason for Atlanta, but now that we've had a few weeks to kind of digest all the major moves, not just of the Falcons, but of every team in the National Football League, we get to see what teams did the smartest move and, and had a clear strategy with what they were trying to execute. And the very smart people over at Pro Football Focus, PFF, they did an analysis. They looked through every single team, all the moves they made, and say, okay, which teams had a clear strategy and had the best scheme fits to help them make a big leap in 2024 and the Atlanta Falcons were at the very top of their list let's go into the report from PFF and then we'll talk about it more in detail on the other side all right uh the most consequential move in free agency is Kirk Cousins arrival in Atlanta the Falcons ranked dead last in passing grade this past season Cousins has ranked in the top seven in PFF passing grade in each of the last three seasons Equally is as important is that he will likely continue to play in an offense that he's run for the vast majority of his career. Cousins has played for Mike and Kyle Shanahan, Gary and Clint Kubiak, Kevin Stefanski, and most recently, Kevin O'Connell. His new offensive play caller, Zach Robinson, comes from the same tree after spending the last five seasons in Los Angeles with Sean McVay. Darnell Mooney also enters the fold as a vertical weapon who could bounce back from a tough year in a new environment. Lastly, the Falcons made an underrated signing at tight end, bringing in San Francisco's Charlie Warner. He, like Cousins, is very familiar with the Shanahan-style offense. While he's not lighting, while he's not going to light up box scores, his contributions up front will make him an important asset in Atlanta. All right, so it's clear the Atlanta Falcons did a phenomenal job with their really clear strategy here. I think when you focus and add all the moves together, it was a great effort by Terry Fontenot and company. Myas, I'm curious what your thoughts are, but first, Falcons fans in the comment section below. Now that we've gotten through the majority of the big names, the big portion of the offseason, and we've had some time to digest everything, grade how you think the Falcons have done this offseason. Do you think they knocked it out of the park? They get an A+. plus. Do you think it was kind of, man, you wanted a little more. Maybe it's a C+. Plus. Maybe you're waiting to see. Maybe give it a B. Whatever it is, grade the Atlanta Falcons offseason up to this point in the comment section below. But, Myers, give me your thoughts on this report and everything with the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, Nick, I think this is a really great just assessment of all of the fits that the Atlanta Falcons have made to their scheme. And I think this just goes to show they have a game plan. This new coaching staff has brought people in that really want to fit them stylistically. And it makes sense. Kirk Cousins obviously is the most, you know, important one here. This is the most obvious one as well. I think they brought him in solely because of his fit into this new scheme. As they said, he's played under all of the Shanahan's, the Kubiaks. He's played under Stefanski and O'Connell who also were involved in that Sean McVay coaching scheme as uh, one way or that other. So I think that that's going to be very good just because for the fact that Zach Robinson is from that tree. So I think it's going to be really, really important. But the other two, they don't talk about quite as much, so let's get into those. I think Darnell Mooney, he's going to be great because as they said, the Falcons really kind of need some help in the weapon department as far as a specific part of their game, that vertical threat option. They were 28th in the NFL in 10 plus yard receptions last season, and as well as 20th in receiving grade on such throws as well. I think this has Mooney coming into the fold as a true vertical weapon. Obviously, last year, Justin Fields not really giving him the best of options as far as those throws go, but he has been known to be very good in that aspect. I think Kirk Cousins is much better suited to give Mooney some shots on those 10 plus yard throws. So I think that's a very good addition here as well. But lastly, the tight end Charlie Warner, I think this is a really interesting one because while we know Kyle Pitts is a great receiving tight end, the Atlanta Falcons ranked dead last in run blocking at the tight end position last season. While Warner ranked second in the NFL in running blocking last season behind none other than his teammate, you know, George Kittle. No one's going to be a better run blocker than George Kittle. The guy's an absolute monster. But having the second best run blocker in the league added to this offense is going to help balance out the pure receiving threat of a guy like Kyle Pitts. So once again, like I said, I think these are both really great stylistic fits to help balance out this roster and really help this new offense excel in Atlanta. Yeah, this is, I mean, obviously a lot of Falcons fans weren't huge fans of Kirk Cousins. We heard it in the comments earlier this offseason about them not necessarily wanting Kirk Cousins. But when you look at the, the entire offseason and the strategy the Falcons have used, it's really as good as anybody, right? And I know they spent a lot of money and some people were concerned that they overpaid. The reality is at a certain point, if you have the cap space, 
you've got to use it, right? So understand everybody always gets nervous when you spend a lot of money, but do you rather have $30 million in cap space and go seven and 10 again, right? No, then you want to win. You want to win football games. You want to win the NFC South, which I think they can with this clear and effective strategy, right? They brought in Zach Robinson and say, okay, we're running the McVay, the Kyle Shanahan offense, right? We already have good offensive linemen, good zone blocking offensive linemen. Now we need a tight end that knows how to block in that offense as well. Enter Charlie Warner, check. OK, now we need a quarterback that knows how to execute that offense. That can be a dynamic play action passer in the deep game. OK, Kirk Cousins. Check. OK, now we need a big play receiver with speed that can stretch a defense vertically. OK, Darnell Mooney. Check. You go down the list, you sit there and say, OK, well, we already have dynamic playmakers like Kyle Pitts. We've already got a physical receiver in London. Bijan Robinson's a superstar in the making. Check, check, check. And you, you look at the entire strategy of the Falcons offense, and it's just it, it literally is perfect, right? This team is set up talent wise and strategy wise to be one of the top offenses in football and one of the most complete offenses in football. One of the things people forget about top flight contenders in the NFL is that they never have a lot of cap space, right? They never had a lot of draft capital. The 49ers have like no cap space. The 49ers never have a lot of picks. The Bills never really have a lot of cap space. The Chiefs are really right around the number a lot of the time, right? They've had to let a lot of big name players go. So again, Falcons fans, what the Falcons are doing is they're using their cap space and have used it with a perfect strategy in mind. And I think it's a outstanding move it's an incredible move with what they've been able to do i haven't seen an i haven't seen a team do this in, in recent memory where they had an offense that was so just listless with personnel and strategy and scheme and in a few short weeks have completely flipped it or if you look at the falcons and say okay they've got a great play caller to run the shanahan mcbay offense they've got a quarterback who will execute that they already have a great running back they got an offensive line they got a run blocking tight end to help it out they've got dynamic playmakers already in pits in london and then they added the deep threat with Mooney on top of it. You look at it like, you know, the, the Los Angeles Rams would kill to have this off. And Sean McVay would kill to have the personnel that they have in Atlanta right now. Even Kyle Shanahan, San Francisco, he looks at as great as talented, and that's an incredibly talented team. He probably looks at the Atlanta roster and is like, you know, they're pretty close to us. I mean, Bijan may not be that far from Christian McCaffrey. You look at Mooney, could be a Brandon Ayuk guy, Drake London. He's probably not at Debo Samuel's level, but he has that level of talent. Kyle Pitts has the ability to be a George Kittle. Offensive line in Atlanta is better than San Francisco. I mean, Kirk Cousins could be better than Brock Purdy. I mean, it, it, as strange as this to say, this Falcons offense is starting to rival the top offenses, not just in the NFC South, which was the goal, of course, at first, but to rival the top offenses in the entire National Football League. And that's what having a smart strategy and executing on it will do for you. I think the Falcons are criminally underrated with what they've done, and I think they're going to make a lot of noise this upcoming season.